Hello, this will be our fourth lecture on Real Estate Investment Trust. And in this class, I will be focusing on how to value Real Estate Investment Trust. In the previous lectures, we've been looking at some interesting topics. We've looked at the concept of a REIT. We've looked at the different types of a REIT. We've looked at the different stages of REIT maturity. We have looked at the REIT market in terms of its size and performance. We have looked at the rules that govern the establishment of REITs and the distribution of REIT income. And in the last lecture, we looked at how to measure REIT income. In this lecture, we will treat how to value REITs. Now, let's start. As we now turn to the various methods utilized by prospective REIT investors in determining the market value of a REIT sh share price, it is helpful to remember our lessons in property valuation, particularly concerning the three forms of real estate property valuation, income, sales, and cost. While REIT valuation techniques are not perfectly correlated with investment property valuation methods, elements of all three of these approaches are present in the techniques which follow. REIT share price valuation can best be seen as a blend of real estate and general stock market share price valuations, which considering the subject matter makes intuitive sense. The general tendency is to buy when the intrinsic value as determined by the prospective investor is higher than the current stock price and to sell when the intrinsic value is less than the current price of the stock of the REIT or the REIT stock. The valuation of a REIT involves different approaches in different regions. There are at least three techniques used in valuing REITs and we will look at these three methods in a short while. First, we will look at what we call the dividend growth model or the dividend discount model. This is a technique we have treated in last semester's real estate finance class when we attempted to value equities. The second technique we'll be looking at is the net asset value technique. And the last technique would be the funds from operations multiple technique. Now let's look at the details of each of these techniques. We should be clear from the discussion here that REITs are required to pay out the majority of their income in the form of dividends to shareholders. So let's look at how we can use the dividend discount model to value a REIT. The Gordon dividend growth model utilizes the future dividend per share expected to be paid out next year and calculates the value of the stock as the present value of expected future dividends. The model assumes a constant dividend growth and is similar to a discount to the discounted cash flow analysis in formulation. Projections are then calculated Prospective investors begin the analysis with a construction of a discounted cash flow based on the income statement of the company. Projections are then created utilizing assumed revenue and expense growth rates by line item. The net operating income or the fund from operations 
for a read is calculated for an assuming holding period with the final period ending when a reversionary with a reversionary cash flow. This leads to the present value of the firm, which is then converted to a per share basis by dividing by the number of shares outstanding. The expected future dividend per share forms the basis for the Gordon dividend growth model as is shown on this slide. Value is equal to the expected future dividend divided by the required rate of return K minus the dividend growth rate G. Assuming an expected future dividend of three dollars of three dollars per share an investor requires a rate of return of 10 percent per annum and a dividend growth rate of four percent per annum the intrinsic value of a hypothetical read stock is calculated by using this formula as follows as 50 dollars per share as is shown in this table while the determination of the expected dividend is based on the investors expectations of the future operation operating performance of the REIT the intrinsic value of the REIT is also based on the investors required rate of return and the constant dividend growth rate assumed now let's look at the second method of REIT valuation, which is the net asset value technique. A second method for valuing the intrinsic value of a REIT stock is the net asset value approach. The NAV or the net asset value is calculated by aggregating the stabilized net operating income or the fund of the fund from operation for the entire period of the company for the entire company at a point and dividing by an appropriate blended cap rate for the company's real estate assets as was discussed in your previous lessons in land economy estimating a cap rate for a specific real estate investment can become complicated once the prospective investor attempts to include comparables into the analysis. Thus, the determination of a blended cap rate has similar issues, especially when the investment portfolio is highly diversified. A more appropriate method of calculating net asset value is to estimate the net operating income for each property in the portfolio and to divide by a specific cap rate for each property. Then the aggregate value of the portfolio can be determined. Net asset value is the result of debt being subtracted from the total property value held in the REIT. A simple example of the net asset value estimation technique is shown in this table. The gross revenue for our hypothetical REIT is $35 million, which is offset by $15 million in operating expenses. Since REITs report the value of their real estate holdings at book value in their financial statements, there is a need to estimate the market value of the investment property by dividing the net operating income by a cap rate. So here we have a cap rate of 9.5%. Once debt is subtracted from the aggregate market value of the properties the estimate of net asset value 
is achieved. So once we subtract a debt, an assumed debt of 75 million from the estimated value, we arrive at a net asset value of this amount. Once divided by the number of outstanding shares, the net asset value model estimates the share price of our hypothetical rate at $49.28. The NAV model can be seen as a blend of the cost and income approaches to value, given the desire to obtain an estimate of the current market value of the assets held by the REIT rather than simply focusing on the book value as per the REIT financial statement. Now let's look at the third technique to valuing REITs. Now the fund from operation multiple approach to valuing REIT Stocks is one of the more popular methods utilized by most analysts. The fund from operation multiple approach is similar to the price to earnings multiple utilized by analysts when valuing traditional equity investments. Funds from operations is defined as the net income computed in accordance with the generally accepted accounting principles, otherwise known as GAP, excluding gains or losses from sales of property or debt restructuring and adding back real estate depreciation. Once fund from operation is estimated, it is then divided by the number of shares outstanding or the projected number of future shares are standing to arrive at the fund from operation per share. The intrinsic value of the REIT stock is estimated by multiplying the fund from operation per share by the fund from operation multiple. The fund from operation multiple can be estimated by researching the REIT's historical multiple and via peer group and industry multiples. The peer group fund from operation multiple consideration is similar to the use of comparables in the sales approach valuation for investment property. Since investment real estate is better viewed when compared to similar properties, REIT stock valuation offers no exception to this general rule. As an example of fund from operation multiple value construction, the intrinsic value of our hypothetical REIT stock is estimated at $49.5 per share as is shown in this table. As similar to the sales approach valuation for a specific investment property, the fund from operation multiple valuation approach for REITs, it's only as valid as the accuracy of the REIT stocks deemed comparable by the analyst or prospective investor. Now I will turn my attention to the last two slides, which looks at a phenomenon um, that has generated a lot of uh, tension among academics and analysts. It is this idea of REITs trading either at a discount or at a premium to their net asset values. Now what does that mean? When a REIT is trading at, its, at a discount to its net asset value, it means that um, its listed price or its listed value is lower than uh, its assessed or estimated value on the books. And when a, when a REIT is trading at a premium, 
it means that its listed price or value is higher than its net asset value. So let's look at some of the data um, over the years that demonstrate this discount in premiums to NAV. This diagram here is produced by Green Street Advisors and it looks at the estimated global rate discounts and premiums over from 1990 to 2010. Data produced by Green Street Advisors suggest that in late 2008, US REITs traded at an average discount to NAV of approximately 40%. That is lower than their NAV. In early 2009, REITs briefly traded at their net asset values. And since then, REITs have traded at a premium to their net asset value. That is higher than their net asset value. At the end of November 2010, the premium to net asset value was estimated at 16.2%. When REITs trade at premiums, the sector can be expected to grow as REITs can buy property for less than the increase in share price that results. This is accretive to earnings. In these circumstances, REITs issues or issuances or shares by existing companies and new REIT launches become attractive to investors. Let's look at the last slide, which is um, another set it's of data, data um, which depicts this discount to net asset value or premium to net asset value over time. So data from 2015 to 2017 also confirms that indeed REITs trade at a premium or discount to NAV at different times. So in the US mall sector, discount to net asset value have widened further through 2017 and implied spreads between higher and lower quality properties have also increased. The office sector continues to trade around a 5 to 10% discount to NAV or discount to net asset value. But conversely, the industrial and health um, care markets retain sizable premiums. Healthcare operators in particular have taken advantage of favorable market conditions to raise 3.5 billion US dollars through the first half of 2017. Uh, this is compared to 4.9 billion in 2016. With widening discount to NAV, retail REITs have been relatively absent from the market while apartment operators have taken advantage of the closing net asset value discount to raise more capital in the first half of 2017 than all of 2016. Now, there is an interesting question to be asked, which is what factors explain the discount or premium to net asset values we observe in these two diagrams. This is a phenomenon I want you to research on and submit a brief position paper on. The details of the assignment will be shared via the Google Classroom platform. Thank you for your attention. In the next lecture on REITs, we will be learning about the REIT market in Africa with a focus on Ghana. Thank you for uh, your patience and thank you for um, having a look at this lecture. I'll come your way next week with um, a lecture on Africa and read in Ghana. Thank you. Bye.
However, I just want to remind you that um, since we are in distressed times, um, make sure you are washing your hands always and you are practicing social distance. Make sure you stay alive to see the next semester. Bye.